Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Father God, we pray that you come and speak to us. Let your word transform our lives. Let's read Psalms 139 together. How precious it is, Lord, to realize that you are thinking about me constantly. I can't even count how many times a day your thoughts turn towards me. And when I awaken in the morning, you are still thinking of me. Psalms 8 together. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man? The son of man that you care for him. You made him little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. 1 Corinthians 3, together. You realize, don't you, that you are the temple of God and God himself is present in you. John 14, together. Trust me, there is plenty of room for you in my Father's home. If that's where it was so, wouldn't I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on my way to get your room ready, I'll come back and get you so you can live where I live. And Luke 10, together, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. How many of you know the song of Whitney Houston? The greatest love of all is easy to achieve. Learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. There are three things wrong about that song. Ask me what? Number one, I don't sound like Whitney Houston. <laughs> My voice, you know, not very well right now and pumipiyok uh, siya. But the second thing that's wrong with that song, I believe that the greatest love of all is not a love for self, it is God's love for us. You agree with me? The greatest love of all is God's love for you. The greatest love of all is Jesus dying on the cross for you. The greatest love of all is Jesus becoming a human being, disrobing His divinity and His glory, descending from the throne of heaven and becoming a part of our life. The love, the greatest love of all is Jesus being broken as bread and God melting in our tongue. The greatest love of all is God dwelling in your heart and calling you His rest. The greatest love of all is God preparing a home for you in heaven. The greatest love of all is God telling you, I will be with you until the end of this age. Hallelujah! The third thing that's wrong with the song is this. The greatest love of all is easy to achieve. I've met so many people in my lifetime. I've gone all over the world. I've gone to different countries. I've gone to different cities. I've met thousands of people with different problems. Ask me what I've learned. I've learned that loving yourself is not easy to achieve. Loving yourself is not at all easy to achieve. People have a very difficult time to love themselves. It's easy to be selfish. That, that's not loving yourself. It's easy to be greedy. That's not loving yourself. Loving yourself is difficult to achieve. Can I ask you people, how many of you have problems? Raise your hand. Do you know that half of you who have problems have problems because you don't love yourself? Do you understand what I'm talking about? What am I saying? Some of you have problems with your health. Guess what? Many of you have problems, not, not maybe many, but maybe some of you, I, I want to be very, very, very accurate here, maybe some of you have problems with your health because there, came, there was a point in your life when you were not loving yourself. You were not taking care of yourself. You got what I'm saying? 
Some of you have problems with your job. Brother Bo, I feel stagnant in my job. Brother Bo, I'm not being promoted in my job. Brother Bo, the opportunities for growth are not there. I'm going to tell you why. Maybe some of you are in that problem because there was a point in your life when you were not loving yourself when you were not developing your talents, when you, when you were not increasing your confidence, when you were difficult relating to people because you were not feeling good about yourself. I'm going to tell you something. Half, I believe half of people who have problems today have problems today because they do not love themselves. It's not an easy, easy thing to, to achieve, believe me. And what I want to share with you today is something very, very practical. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you seven reasons. How many? seven reasons why you need to love yourself let's go number one because God loves you amen Amen. how many of you believe that God loves you everybody say that God loves me how can you not love yourself if God loves you amen if God had a refrigerator guess what your photo would be on it and he'd look at that photo every day If God had a wallet, what would God do? He'd put your picture in it and he'd look at it every single day. Brothers and sisters, God has written the name of your hand, your name in the palm of his hand. God, God loves you and you cannot, cannot in any way say that I'm not gonna love myself. Here's number two, because God made you. God does not make made junk. You believe in that? God does not make garbage, amen? God does not make trash, amen? God made every part of you and you everybody say this I'm beautiful para hindi kayo convinced sabi mo sa katabi mo you are very beautiful why because God made you God made every part of you every fiber of your being that's that's who God is God made you and God God made makes only beautiful things um, number three because God lives in you Hallelujah. You know what? If God would fill out a bio data sheet and, and uh, you know, name God, address the human heart. God dwells in you. Number four, because God has a glorious destiny for you. Not only in heaven, but even while we live on earth, God already has a beautiful, glorious, great plan for your life. And number five, because God wants you to love yourself. You don't love your neighbor as yourself. That's what Jesus said. He expects you to love yourself. And number six, because you'll be able to love God and others only if you love yourself. Everybody say that. Only if. if. You cannot love God if you don't love yourself. You cannot love anyone. You cannot love your wife. You cannot love your kids. You cannot love your parents. You cannot love your friends. You cannot love anyone. You cannot even love the poor if you do not love yourself. You've got to have a healthy, strong love for yourself. Number seven, because you'll be happy only if you love yourself. I'm sorry, you cannot be happy in any way if you do not love yourself. It's the foundation. It really is. When I was 14 years old, I shared this story already with you, but I'll share it again. When I was 14 years old, I went to confession. And, you know, at that time, I was already playing the guitar. And I loved playing the guitar. And, and I was, by the age 14, I was not really a great guitarist, but you know, I was the only one in the group who knew how to play the guitar and felt good playing the guitar. I, you know, b- just a few months before that, I played the guitar this way. Come, Holy Spirit, I need... Sandali lang, sandali lang. A, key of A. A, thank you. You, you know, that, that, was, that was me. But then I got better and better. And, and you know, I didn't, I didn't let people stop anymore, you know, in between the song. And I could now play the guitar. Guess what? I began to feel good. I began to feel good when I played the guitar. And I, and I felt proud that, that, I, that I can play the guitar. And you know what? I went to confession because I felt there was human pride in my heart. I was, I was getting boastful and I was feeling good that I was really a great guitarist. I went to the priest and I said, Father, bless me for I have sinned. My sin is pride. I, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming too, too proud that I, 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 I play the guitar. And you know what the priest said? He laughed and he said, Son, Bo, he knew me personally, Bo, be happy enjoy playing the guitar 
feel good that you play the guitar. Be proud that God gave you that gift. Go on. God bless you. And after, after the confession, I went out. And you know what I said in my heart? I didn't say this to anyone. I'm telling you now. Ask me what? I told, it, I told myself, that priest, he doesn't understand me. He's, just, he's not very spiritually mature. I want to be a saint. I want to be holy like St. Francis and St. Dominic and St. John. And I, I want to be pure. I don't want any taint of pride. And, and, and no, I want to love God alone. That was my heart. And so that priest, I never went to confession to him again because he was spiritually immature. I did not know, brothers and sisters, it was I who was spiritually immature. There, you need to feel good about yourself. I've learned now, I'm telling you that happened when I was 14 years old. That was not too long ago. But I want you to know, brothers and sisters, it is now so important for me that I feel good. Important for me that I feel good about myself. Can I ask you that question? Do you feel good about yourself? You didn't convince me at all. It's like, do I feel good about myself? You know, it's a skill. In fact, it's a life skill. I wish they teach this in college. I wish there was a course, you know, a whole subject on how to feel good about yourself because it is so crucial to success and to happiness. You cannot be successful in life if you do not learn how to feel good about yourself every day. You've got to learn how to feel good. You've got to learn how to like yourself and feel good about yourself. Everybody say that. I like me. Now, how does that flow out of your tongue? How does that roll out of your tongue? Is that easy? Or I like me. You know? Everybody say this. God is pleased with me. No, Bo, God is not pleased with me. I've done so many bad things. Listen to me. God may not be pleased with some of the things that you do, but God is very pleased with you. God, is so, God does not look at your sin. God looks at you. You understand? You, you look at your sin, and that's why you're so, well, me, I'm a failure, I'm a loser. Hey, hey, God looks at you, not at your sin. And it's so important. I'll give you 10 ways of how you can love yourself. Are you ready? Everybody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Number one, greet yourself with happiness and affection. Everybody say that. Greet yourself with happiness and affection. How do you greet your friend, best friend? How do you greet that person? Yeah, th this is how I greet. John, can you come here? John, let, we have to come here because there's, a, there's light here. Let, let, let's, say, let's say John. You know, I, John is a great friend of mine. And you know, when he visits me or I visit him or we meet in a mall, this is how we greet each other. Okay, one more time, one more time. That, that, that was just fake. That was it. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Brother! How are you, brother? God bless you. Amen. Pinapag-usapan na ka nga kami sa mall eh, kasi bakit dalawang lalaki nagyayakapan? <laughs> but that's what we, how we greet one another. We greet one another with warmth, with a big smile on my face. You got what I'm saying? That's how you greet your friends, yes? Let me ask you this question. How do you greet yourself in the morning? How do you greet you? Do you, do you greet you? Uh, Brother Bo, I'm not insane. <laughs> Thank you. I, I don't wake up and say, hi. <laughs> but you have to. You actually, you know, when you wake up, I'm telling you, what if, what if John is walking there and he's going to meet me at the mall? What if I greet him in this way? What would he feel? What would he feel? What would he feel? Hurt? Offended? Yes. We don't greet ourselves. I've learned to greet myself in the morning. I did. I have. I, you know, when I wake up, I say, Oh, thank you, Lord, for making me. Thank you. I'm a great person. I'm a wonderful person. I'm a loving person. I'm a kind person. I'm blessed. 
I really am. I'm accepted. I'm a child of God. God loves me. You got what I'm saying? You have to greet yourself with warmth in the morning. You don't wake up and say, Ay, buisit ka. <laughs> buisit na araw to. Ang pangit mo. You know, I'm, I'm so ugly. I'm so bad. I'm so... Don't do that. You're, you, you know, you greet your... Hey, many times we treat our friends better than we treat ourselves. Don't ever do that. You need to treat yourself in a great way because you need to love yourself. Here's number two. Accept yourself as who you are. Everybody say that. As you are. Yeah, that's the key word. Everybody say, as you are. As you are. There are people I've met who are so hypercritical. Everybody say that. There are people who I know are so judgmental about themselves. So judgmental. They, they criticize themselves. They criticize their weakness. They criticize their mistakes. They criticize their failures. They criticize the, the failure that they did in 1935 of June 22. I mean, my gosh, they are so historical. They think about all these failures and they don't accept themselves for who they are. Not only that, I'm going to say this to all the women here. Women, you've got to learn to accept your bodies as you are. Really. We, we have a problem in our culture. We, we have a problem in our culture. Our, our culture, our, our showbiz media culture says, a woman is beautiful only if she looks like the models that walks on the, walk on the ramps. You know, these are thin, exceedingly thin women, right? Tall and thin. If you're not tall and thin, you are not beautiful. That's what the world is saying. I've got a problem with that because there are different body types. Yes? And you know what? The body type of the model is only 3% of the human population. Meaning to say 97% of women are not tall and thin. There are women that are, there are more, more, they, yeah, they're, they're, they're round. You know? You know, the, I, I remember this, I remember this t-shirt this guy was wearing. He was really huge. And he said, I'm in shape. Round is a shape, you know. <laughs> and uh, did you know that they made a survey of those who read fashion magazines? You know what I mean by fashion magazines? They've read that 75% of women who read, especially these imported, imported fashion magazines, 75% of, the, of, of women who read these fashion magazines get depressed after. Maybe depressed is a, it's a too strong a word. Discourage. You know why? This is how they read it. I am so thin. Oh, my gosh. You know, and they get depressed. And I tell people, why bother? You know, why bother reading something that will get you depressed? I, I tell people, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're body type, if your body type is not the thin and the tall woman, it's something else. Especially if your body type is, is, is the heavy one, the big one. I want you to, to go to the, don't, don't read fashion magazines, go instead to, to a museum. Yes, you will be very encouraged. In fact, go to the museum where they display paintings of 200 years ago. Renoir, okay, and Titan and, uh, and uh, Rodin because these paintings of 200 years ago they've got women who are voluptuous they've, they're, they're 180 pounds and some of them are naked and they don't care they are one, they've got huge bellies you know, large thighs because 200 years ago during their time that was beautiful you got what I'm saying? the goal is not to be thin the goal is to be what? Healthy. To be healthy. That's the goal. Amen? Tell someone beside you, you are beautiful as you are. Here's number three. You've got to forgive yourself. Everybody say, forgive yourself. There are people I know, they've gone to God, they've asked God for forgiveness, they go to confession again and again and again, they've received the forgiveness of God, but they do not forgive themselves for a failure they committed in the past. Don't do that. God is bigger and His love is bigger than your sin. Do you agree with that? Number four, 
You've got to nurture yourself and nourish your needs. If you love yourself, you are sensitive to what you need. You're sensitive to what you... And you need to, you, you need to learn how to feel good about yourself. When you feel down, when you feel, you know, you're, you're, not, you don't, you're not very up and, and you feel you look down at yourself, you've got to learn how to feel good about yourself. Begin to think of your blessings. Begin to speak to yourself. Begin to think of scripture. A few days ago, I think that was three days ago, I had a haircut. And I was, I was, you know, the 60 peso haircut in the corner, you know, very simple barber shop. And after my haircut, the barber gives me a 30 second massage. Men, you know this. It's a nice, wonderful 30 second massage after the haircut. I had so much work waiting for me at home. In fact, while, my, while I was having my haircut, I was saying, I'm going to have to write this, I'm going to do that, I have to write this, make this phone call. I, I had so much work. And yet, as he was massaging me, something came to my mind. You know what came to my mind? I said, life is short. I should enjoy it. Life is so short. I mean, what's the use of working and working and working if, not, if I'm not going to enjoy my life? So I told the, the barber, after he gave me that 30-second massage, I said, how much is a 30-minute massage? And he showed me the list. 150 pesos. And so I said, give me one. I had so much work waiting for me, but I told myself, work can wait. I need to enjoy myself. <laughs> and so for the first time, I'm 41 years old. It's the first time I got a massage from a barber. He reclined the chair. He put a towel over my face. And then he started massaging my face. I'm telling you, barbers have strong fingers and strong hands. I thought he was rearranging my whole face. I felt that my nose was in my cheek already by the end. I mean, it was really strong. And he massaged my shoulders and he massaged my hands. You know, after 30 minutes, I felt so good. I felt so good. And, and we need to be sensitive to, to what we need. And we need to know how to nurture ourselves. I've, I've, uh, this morning, I was brushing my teeth. And I was, you know, a funny question entered my mind. Why am I brushing my teeth? I haven't eaten in the past 12 days. It's true, I've not eaten in the past 12 days. You know, we've been, I, I've been fasting. And, but, but you know what? You know what? You know why I'm fasting? Well, of course I'm fasting because I love God. I love you. I love my community. I, I want to pray for certain things. I want to open myself to so many blessings. I feel fantastic. feel wonderful. But you know why I'm also fasting? Ask me why. I love myself. I really am doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a favor for my body. I want it cleaned inside. You know, fasting is detoxification, you know that? It cleans, cl cleans my liver, my kidney, my digestive tract, my, my colon, my, it cleans my blood, you know? It cleans me up! And, and uh, I'm doing it because I love myself, thank you. And it's, you know, loving yourself is a powerful motivation to do the right thing. Amen? 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 Hallelujah. Um, number five, set your boundaries. Say that with me. Set your boundaries. If you do not love yourself, guess what? You will fall victim to people who steal from you, people who exploit you, people who look down at you and call you names, who criticize you. Do you know of people like that? Every time you meet them, it's as though they look down at you. Mm. What are you doing? Oh, you will fail. Oh no, don't do that anymore. It's a waste of time. You know, they, they look down at you. If you know people like that, you know, do you know of people who are very negative? Who are so negative, they complain a lot. They complain and complain. Guess what? All of those people I mentioned, those who steal, those who exploit you, those who abuse you, those who look down at you, those who are very critical of you, those who are very negative in life and, and keep on complaining and complaining and complaining. All or possessive people, people are so possessive, they're so jealous of you and they, 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 you've cordoned on your life and they want to own every bit of time with you and when you spend time with someone else, they, they pull you back and they get hurt and all of that. All of those people I mentioned above, they're what I call, and that they're, what, they're what psychologists call emotional vampires. They are. And when you see a vampire, you don't spend time with a vampire. Right? What do you do? You get away. You get away. Amen? 
Okay. Here it is. If I mention the, the vampire, the emotional vampire, you shout, get away! Okay, let's practice. Okay. From people who look down on you and criticize you again and again and again. From people who are so negative and, and, and so complaining about life. From those who are so possessive and want to own you. From people who steal from you and abuse you. Get away. Set boundaries in your life. Protect yourself. You got what I'm saying? Some people here are sad. Brother Bo, everyone will get away from me. <laughs> well, change. Change. I know of people who complain and complain a lot. They're so negative. My God. You know what vampires do? They bite you. And when a vampire bites you, you become a vampire as well. You, it's infectious. Their negativity is infectious. The, 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 their being a critical spirit is infectious. You know, life is short. It is so short. Live with people who are nurturing and positive and, and wonderful people. Amen? Amen? Tell someone beside you, I thank God you're my partner, you're my friend, you're my spouse, you're my brother, you're my... <laughs> Hallelujah. Number six. Everybody say, affirm yourself. I'm going to give you one advice that will change your life. Totally and completely. Are you ready? Are you sure you're going to do this assignment? It's going to change your life forever. Take five minutes a day. Five minutes a day. One, two, three, four, five. Just five minutes a day, every single day for three months. Don't stop until three months is over. Five minutes a day, affirm yourself saying out loud, out loud, every day, five minutes a day, I'm a great person. I'm a wonderful person. I'm a child of God. I'm blessed. I'm accepted by God. I'm beautiful. I'm equipped. I'm accepted. I'm approved. God has a plan for my life. Five minutes. Say it. Declare it. It's even better if you use the Bible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. For God so loved me that He gave His only Son. So that who... You got what I'm saying? Yes. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in me. Jesus lives... You know, speak the word. Confess. Affirm yourself. Five minutes a day. It's going to change your life. Amen? Amen. Will you do it? Number seven, invest in great relationships. If you want to live a happy life, you need to have happy relationships. Look for them. Number eight, keep growing and keep getting better in every area of your life. The reason why I, I want to study even more, the reason why I'm learning new skills is because I want to get better. The reason why I exercise is I want to get better. The reason why I, 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 I improve my spiritual life, I want to get better. I want to get better. I love myself. Number nine, Follow your dreams. Everybody say that. Follow your dreams. Last Sunday, I talked about that. If you have dreams in your life, it keeps your focus on the dreams, not on the past. I was looking at my old report card from school, from grade school, and from high school. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Do you know? I, I, was, th I was thinking of this. I, I, I was uh, emailing a classmate of my, mine who won in the, on the oratorical contest when I, was in, when I was in second year high school, I joined an oratorical uh, public declamation contest in high school, second year high school. I was forced by my teacher. My teacher said, Bo, uh, join this contest. You know what? I lost. I lost. And it's so easy to focus on the past and say, you know, I'm not a good speaker. Why? I failed. I lost, you know? You know, I, I, well, let me see. We were about, uh, every year, about eight people. Eight people. I, I think I was number seven or something. I mean, I was, I was a terrible speaker. Don't focus on the past. Focus on your dreams. Amen? But not, not only have dreams, you've got to follow your dreams. You know, when you follow your dreams, you feel good. 
When you start doing, taking steps towards your dream, you feel good about yourself. May I ask the people who play the guitar here to raise your hand? If you play the guitar, raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you very much. If somebody beside you raised their hand, could you touch their left hand, please? And then feel their fingers. Feel the tops of their fingers. What do you see? You know, I don't care if that person is beautiful, beautiful face and so on. The fingers are ugly. Calio, you call it. Dead skin. That person had a dream to learn to play the guitar. That person dreamt of playing the guitar. But that person followed the dream and suffered and sacrificed. I play the guitar. I play the guitar and I've got, I've got to call you to prove it. And you know what? That's part of life. If you follow your dream, you're going to hurt. You're going to go through pain. But it feels good. It feels good to sacrifice. Amen? You've been fasting, right? Every Friday, right? Is it difficult? Yes. Very, right? But it's okay. Why? You've got a dream. You've got a dream to fast. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Number 10. Serve others who need your love. Everybody say that. Serve others who need your love. That, that's, that's my, what I call, I call this the medicine of last resort. You know when I meet a depressed person, that person says to me, Bo, I'm so depressed. And so what I do, I pray over the person, I speak to that person truth, you know. And then the person comes back to me, I'm still depressed. I pray over the person again. And it's okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. But you know, when it goes on and on and on, the discouragement goes on and on and on, and, and I tell this person, resolve your issues and go back to your past and, and face the things that you need to face and so on. And, and it, there's still depression, there's still discouragement. I give the medicine of last resort. Do you know what my medicine of last resort is? I tell that person, I want you to follow me, volunteer every single day in a home for the aged. Meet the people who are so poor they were left by their children. I want you to serve them every single day as a volunteer. And that person tells me, no way, Bo. I've got so many problems. I'm thinking of this. I'm thinking of that. I can't do that. I can't face people who have needs and their problems. And I say, that's what you need right now. You need to get out of your shell. And you need to start thinking of others and loving them. When you start loving and serving other people, something happens in you. You realize you are blessed. You realize God has blessed you profoundly. You got what I'm saying? One way of loving yourself is when you serve others and something happens in your heart. Norman Vincent Peale, was a, he's a best-selling author, and, and he, he was in Hong Kong, in Kowloon, and he visited a tattoo shop, tattoos, and, and uh, there was this, all the designs of different tattoos, snakes, you know, skulls, uh, hearts, cupids, you know, all the designs were available in the shop. And then Norman Vincent Peale, saw this weird tattoo design displayed there on the window. You know what it said? Born loser. And so he asked the tattoo artist, excuse me sir, do people actually put that tattoo on their skin, on their bodies? He was so shocked when the artist said, sir, that is one of the favorite designs. That's, that's what many people, that's, that's one of my top designs, favorite, people like that design. And I said, no way. People want born loser on their skin. And then the artist gave the reason, powerful reason. He said, before tattoo on body, tattoo on mind tattoo on mine. There are many people who in their, in their minds are telling themselves, I'm a born loser. I'm a born loser. I'm a born loser. And they will fail and fail. The blessings of God are all over the place. 
Can you inhale a bit? Just a little bit. Don't, don't, not too much, you know. <laughs> inhale. Air is everywhere, amen? Everywhere, amen? You know what emphysema is? Emphysema is the lungs, something is closed. There's no shortage of air, amen? There's no shortage of air. Air is there. It's just your lungs are closed. And because your lungs are closed, the, the pores, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but, but something is closed, it can't absorb it. Born loser, your life is closed to the blessings that are there. All the blessings you need in life, financial blessings, spiritual blessings, emotional blessings, every blessing is out there. All you have to do is inhale. Many times we walk with a tattoo in our mind that says born loser. You don't see the blessings. From now on, we should say, born winner I'm a born winner amen let me give you a fairy tale Rapunzel you know that the man and the woman the king and the queen had a baby and the queen Naglilihi, you know was having this baby and she was pregnant and then she saw this fruit outside her window it was a, a tree, not owned by them, but by a witch. And, and who was their enemy? And she wanted the fruit so much, but she could not. But as the months went by, as the baby was growing bigger and bigger in her belly, she wanted so much. She was dying for the fruit. She told her husband, the king, please get that fruit, I, I, or else I'm going to die. And so the king got the fruit. But when he got the fruit, the witch, the witch saw, and the witch said, hey, don't do that. And the king was so terrified. And the queen said, I'm going to give you that fruit, but you've got to give me your baby. And the king, I do not know what happened. He was maybe hypnotized or he was shocked, but he said, yes. Anyway, this is just a fairy tale. So, so he said, yes. And he gave the, he gave the fruit to the, to the queen and, and they had a baby. And true enough, the queen kidnapped the baby and brought her to a tower. The child grew up to be the most beautiful, beautiful woman in the entire world. She was so beautiful. But every single day, the witch told her as she was growing up, you're so ugly. Oh my gosh, you are like a monster. Look at your nose. Look at your cheeks. Look at your fingers and toes. They're like, they're like alien. My gosh. You know, started telling this girl, you're ugly, you're ugly, you're ugly, you're ugly. And so the, this, this girl grew up to become a young woman and she was imprisoned in a tower with no ladders. She was, except a little window. But she was not imprisoned by a tower. She was really imprisoned by her fears of her own ugliness. You got me? And then a prince comes who, heard, who hears her voice. And the prince, you know, asks her to put down her hair. And sh he climbs the hair. And then Rapunzel sees the prince, sees his eyes, and his eyes speak volumes to her heart. And through his eyes, the princess Rapunzel sees she is very, very beautiful. Today, I'm going to bet that 90% of you, 90% of you are imprisoned in a tower. 90% of you are not allowing your greatness to come out. You are imprisoned by the fear of your own weakness, fear of your own limitation, fear of your own ugliness, fear of your own mistakes and failures. Jesus the Prince comes, looks at you with great love. Look at his eyes because that's who you really are. You are so beautiful. You are so lovely. You are great because God's greatness is in you.